हाय वेलकम टू आर चैनल ऑफ इग्नू ऑडियो बुक्स इंदिरा गांधी नेशनल ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी स्कूल ऑफ हेल्थ साइंसेस एस ओ एच एस सर्टिफिकेट प्रोग्राम्स सर्टिफिकेट इन न्यू बॉर्न एंड इन्फेंट नर्सिंग सीन बी एन एस वन फिफ्टीन नर्सिंग केयर ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न एंड इन्फेंट ब्लॉक वन प्रिवेंटिव एंड प्रमोशनल एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न यूनिट थ्री ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न केयर फैसिलिटीज थ्री पॉइंट जीरो ऑब्जेक्टिव आफ्टर कम्प्लीटिंग दिस यूनिट यू शुड बी एबल टू टाइम्स डिस्क्राइब द लेवल्स ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न केयर सर्विसेज टाइम्स एक्सप्लेन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न केयर सर्विसेज टाइम्स लिस्ट द एक्विपमेंट्स नेसेसरी फॉर न्यू बॉर्न केयर यूनिट टाइम्स डिस्कस द मैन पावर रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न केयर यूनिट एंड टाइम्स ब्रीफ द इन्फेक्शन कंट्रोल मेजर्स इन न्यू बॉर्न केयर यूनिट थ्री पॉइंट वन इंट्रोडक्शन इन द प्रीवियस टू यूनिट्स यू लर्न अबाउट केयर ऑफ मदर एंड बेबी द केयर ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न रिक्वायर्स अ पर्टिक्युलर सेटिंग यूनिट दिस यूनिट डिस्कसिस द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न हेल्थ केयर फैसिलिटीज ईच ईयर इन इंडिया रफली थर्टी मिलियन विमेन एक्सपीरियंस प्रेगनेंसी एंड अबाउट ट्वेंटी सेवन मिलियन हैव अ लाइफ बर्थ इंडियाज शेयर ऑफ neonatal deaths in the world is around 30% of the global neonatal deaths every year about 12 lakh infants die within one year of birth and out of these about 9 lakh i.e. two thirds of infant deaths take place within the first 4 weeks of life of these about 7 lakh deaths take place within a week of birth in addition millions of newborns suffer birth related ill health thus birth related mortality and morbidity continues to take a huge toll on the life of newborns hence in the present scenario the newborn care unit has become an essential part of any health facility where birth takes place the newborn care unit can ameliorate complications and reduce the number of deaths among newborns it provides good services not only to neonates who are born within the vicinity of the health facility but also from other places hospitals organization of newborn care units is discussed in this unit in this unit you shall learn about the organization of newborn care units and infection control measures in newborn care units 3.2 levels of newborn care services based on the health facility Newborn care services are provided at three levels 3.2.1 level i newborn care services are provided in the primary health center sub center which has been identified as maternal and child health level 1 centers the newborn care corner unit nccu i a space within the delivery room where immediate care is provided to all newborns at birth is set up in this facility This area is mandatory for all health facilities where deliveries are conducted. 3.2.2 Level 2 Newborn care services are provided at the community health centers first referral unit which have been identified as maternal and child health level 2 centers. In addition to newborn care corner NCCU set up in labor room and operation theater in this center newborn stabilization unit NBSU IEA facility within or in close proximity of the maternity ward where sick and low birth weight newborns can be cared for short periods is set up all first referral units FIUs CHCs need to have a neonatal stabilization unit in addition to the newborn corner 3.2.3 level 3 newborn care services are provided at the district hospitals which have been identified as maternal and child health level 3 centers in addition to newborn care corner unit nccu set up in labor room and operation theater special newborn care unit sncu i a neonatal unit in the vicinity of labor room for providing special care all care except assisted ventilation and major surgery for sick newborns is also set up in these centers any facility with more than 3000 deliveries per year should have a sncu dot 3.3 organization of newborn care services national neonatology forum nnf has recommended the following standards for organizing newborn care services at all three levels 3.3.1 design of newborn care corner location and size 
Newborn Care Corner is set up within the labor room of all health facilities for providing immediate newborn care to all newborns. It should be 20 to 30 square feet in size with the clear floor area. It should be equipped with a radiant warmer and resuscitation kit. The area should be away from drafts of air and should have appropriate power connection for plugging in the radiant warmer. For FIUs, first referral units and district hospitals, newborn corners are set up in operation theatres where caesarean sections are conducted. It provides an acceptable environment for all infants at birth, equipment required for the newborn care corner, the Table 3.1 lists the equipments required in the newborn care corner. Table 3.1 Equipments in the newborn care corner Look at the screen. Staffing required for the newborn care corner. One staff nurse or ANM is desirable in addition to the one conducting the delivery for providing appropriate care at birth. Services provided in the newborn care corner. Services provided in the newborn care corner include Times essential care at birth. Times resuscitation. Times provision of warmth. Times early initiation of breastfeeding. Times weighing the neonate. 3.3.2 Design of newborn stabilization units. In CHC first, referral units, location and size. All CHC first referral units must have clearly established arrangements for the prompt, safe and effective resuscitation of babies and for the care of sick newborns. Most sick newborns can be stabilized at this level. For setting up a four bedded stabilization unit where four radiant warmers can be kept, at least 200 square feet of floor space, 40 minus 50 square feet per bed is required. The unit should be located within or in close proximity to the labor room. In addition to beds in the postnatal ward, should be dedicated for rooming in. The unit should have a 24-hour uninterrupted, stabilized power and running water supply. The unit should be well lit, preferably with compact fluorescent light, CFL, panels. The floor surfaces should be easily cleanable, thus minimizing the growth of microorganisms. As with floors, the ease of cleaning, durability and acoustical properties of wall surfaces needs to be considered. Equipment required for newborn stabilization unit, the table 3.2 lists the equipments required in the newborn stabilization unit. Table 3.2, equipments in the newborn stabilization unit, 1. Open care system, radiant warmer, fixed height, with trolley, drawers, oxygen bottles, 4, 2. Resuscitator, hand-operated, neonate, 500 milliliters, 2, 3. Laryngoscope with two blades 0 and 1 to 2, 4. Electronic baby weighing scale up to 10 kg, 1, 5. Pump suction, foot operated, 1, 6. Clinical thermometer, digital, 30 to 234 degrees Celsius, 4, 7. Light examination, mobile, 220 to 12 V, 4, 8. Hub cutter, syringe, 1, renewable resources, 9. IV cannula, 24G, 26G, 10. Extractor mucus, 20ml sterile disposable, DLE, 11. Disposable feeding tube, 7 to 8F, 12. Oxygen cylinder, catheter, 8F, 13. Sterile gloves, 14. Disposable suction catheter, 10F, 15. Cotton wool, 500G, 16. Disinfectants like Cydex 2%, Bacil acid, 10%, comma, Chlorhexidine, 20%, etc. Staffing required for newborn stabilization unit. One dedicated nursing staff needs to be available round the clock for newborn care in the stabilization unit. One medical officer, Skilled in newborn care or pediatrician is required for clinical care and oversight. Services provided in the newborn stabilization unit, a stabilization unit at CHC, FIU, or an equivalent facility provides the following services times care at birth, times provision of warmth, 
times resuscitation, times monitoring of vital signs, times initial care and stabilization of sick newborns, times care of low birth weight newborns not requiring intensive care, times breastfeeding and feeding support, times referral services, referral services, each newborn stabilization unit accepting sick newborns and required to make. Neonatal referrals should have access to an appropriately staffed and equipped transport service. 3.3.3 Design of Special Newborn Care Unit in District Hospital Location and Size The Special Newborn Care Unit should be located in a distinct area within the healthcare facility with controlled access and environment. The unit should be in close proximity to the area of the hospital where births occur, preferably close to the labor room. If obstetric and neonatal services are on separate floors of the hospital, Provision for quick access like a ramp or an elevator should be provided for service between the birthing unit and the care unit. Units receiving infants from other facilities should have ready access to the hospitals. Transport receiving area Transport of newborns within the hospital should be possible without using public corridors. It should provide effective circulation for staff, family, and equipment. Passage for accessing other services should not be through the unit regarding the size of the unit as a general guide for all deliveries occurring within the health facility. Three beds for every 1,000 annual deliveries may be dedicated to the newborn care unit. This demand is for intramural deliveries, those occurring within the district hospital. Additionally, for newborns delivered outside the hospital, extramural, and being brought to the hospital for special care, an extra allowance of 30% of the estimated beds should be considered. For example, if a hospital conducts 3,000 deliveries per year, the number of beds required would be times for intramural, March 1000 x 3000 is equal to 9 beds, times for extramural, 30% x 9 is equal to 3 beds, times total beds required is equal to 12, the units providing special care should have a minimum of 8 beds and a maximum of 16 beds. Each newborn space shall contain a minimum of 100 square feet baby care area, 50 square feet per bed in general support and ancillary areas, 50 square feet per bed. The baby care area, 50 square feet per bed, may be divided into two interconnected rooms separated by transparent observation windows with the nurse's workplace in between. Distinct support space should be provided for all clinical services that are routinely performed in the SNCU. The ancillary area should include space for the following times gowning area at the entrance, times hand washing stations, times examination area, times clean area for mixing intravenous fluids and medications, times mother's area for expression of breast milk, breastfeeding and learning, mother crafts, times side laboratory, times boiling and autoclaving, gowning room, the unit should provide clear floor space, excluding entry work area for gowning. A hands-free, elbow-operated hand-washing station for hand, Hygiene and areas for gowning and storage of clean and soiled materials should be provided near the entrance. The room should have self-closing devices on all exits, hand-washing stations, hand-washing stations should be so positioned that every newborn bed is within 20 feet, 6 meters. Hand-washing stations should be no closer than 3 feet, 0.9 meters from a newborn bed or clean supply storage. It should be a hands-free, elbow-operated hand-washing station. Hand-washing sinks should be large enough to control splashing and sign to prevent standing or retained water. Preferably, the hand-washing sink should be 24, wide, times 16, front to back times 10, deep. Space for pictorial hand-washing instructions should be provided above all sinks, examination area, this should include comfortable seating and allow complete visual and acoustic privacy. Mother's area, it should have comfortable seating and privacy should be provided within the unit to allow mothers to breastfeed comfortably. 
this area should have communication aids so that families can learn about newborn care practices clean utility holding areas such areas should be there for storage of supplies frequently used in the care of newborns routinely used supplies such as diapers linen cover gowns charts etc may be stored in this space space should also be provided for storage of syringes needles intravenous infusion sets and sterile trays salt utility holding room this is essential for storing used and contaminated material before its removal from the care area unless used only as a holding room this room should contain a counter and a hands free hand washing station separate from any utility sinks The ventilation system in the soiled utility holding room should be engineered to have negative air pressure with all air being exhausted to the outside. The soiled utility holding room should be so situated that it enables removal of soiled materials without passing through the baby care area, staff work areas along with the provision of charting space on each bedside and additional separate area or desk for tasks. such as compiling records completing requisitions etc should be provided dedicated space can also be allocated for electronic medical record keeping linen washing laundry area if laundry facilities are not provided a separate laundry room can serve the functions of laundry space should accommodate a washing machine with dryer placement of an automatic washing machine with dryer promotes the efficiency and effectiveness of the aseptic cleaning process staff support space space should be provided within the unit to meet the professional personal and administrative needs of the staff these areas include doctor's duty room nurses changing room step down area rooming in facility and additional five bed step down area where recovering neonates can stay with their mothers before discharge is off added advantage to a sncu this will relieve the pressure on the sncu to some extent the additional space requirement should be about 40 to 50 square feet per bed the space can be in the sncu or in the vicinity or in the postnatal ward floor surfaces floor surfaces should be easily cleanable and should minimize the growth of microorganisms materials should permit cleaning without the use of chemicals at the same time floors should be highly durable to withstand frequent cleaning and heavy traffic vitrified tiles are preferred other flooring that may be used includes kota stone or chip flooring however such flooring needs to be well polished walls as with floors the ease of cleaning durability and acoustical properties of wall surfaces must be considered although commonly used vinyl wall covering contains pvc which degrades indoor air quality and thus should be avoided walls should be glazed tiled up to a height of at least 7 feet water supply the unit should have 24 hour uninterrupted running water supply to ensure water supply it is useful to have a separate overhead tank with a capacity of 1000 to 2000 liters electrical needs power supply the unit should have a 24 hour uninterrupted stabilized power supply backup power supply is a must with one or two outlets to ensure this a generator with 25 to 50 kva capacity and a servo stabilizer three phase of the same rating is needed monitors must have ups electrical outlet for individual beds to handle equipment 6 to 8 central voltage stabilized outlets are required per bed four of them should be of 5 amperes and another four of 15 amperes to alternate sockets for mobile bedside x-ray equipment or usg machine need to be planned lighting of the unit The unit should be well illuminated with adequate daylight panel of lights with cool white fluorescent tubes preferably CFL or LED light emitting diodes will be required for adequate illumination lighting perception of skin tones is critical in a SNCU light sources should provide accurate skin tone recognition
light sources should be as free as possible of glare or wailing reflections. No direct view of the electric light source or sun shall be permitted in the newborn space including direct procedure lighting. Any lighting used outside the baby area shall be located so as to prevent any newborns. Direct line of sight to the fixture. Lighting fixtures should be easily cleaned. Temperature. The unit should be designed to provide an air temperature of 78.8 degrees Fahrenheit to 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit, 26 to 28 degrees C. Dot. Ventilation. Ventilation in the unit should inhibit particulate matter from moving freely in the space and to minimize drafts on or near the newborn beds. General. Ventilation can be provided in two ways, exhaust only and supplant exhaust. Exhaust fans pull stale air out of the unit while drawing fresh air in through, cracks, windows or fresh air intakes. Exhaust only ventilation is a good choice for units that do not have existing ductwork to distribute heated or cooled air. Supplant exhaust ventilation is a good choice for units with heating or cooling. Ducts, as it is an inexpensive way of providing fresh air, equipments required for special newborn care unit, equipments should be planned on the basis of the functional services to be provided by the unit. There must be access to equipments for times providing radiant heat, times monitoring of vital signs, including blood pressure and blood gases, times fluid and drug treatment, times providing venous access, Times portable X-ray facilities, staffing, at least two dedicated staff nurses per shift are necessary for a 12-bedded unit, 30% extra staffing is recommended to account for nights off and leave, vacancies. There should be an adequate number of doctors to be able to take a round of the newborns once in each shift, every 8 hours, and to be on call, round the clock. Dedicated support staff should be there to clean the nursery at least once every shift and more often, depending on the need. For a 12-bed unit, the recommended staffing is times staff nurses, 10 times physicians, 3 times support staff, 4, 3.4 infection control in newborn unit. To prevent infection in newborn unit, the prescribed procedures are to be followed before entering the newborn unit. Specific procedures such as cleaning, disinfection and sterilization should be carried out correctly in order to prevent control infection in the newborn care unit. You will learn in detail about the infection control in newborn unit in the next unit I block 1 unit 4. 3.5 Summary This unit provides specific guidance for setting up newborn care services for different levels of health services. All health facilities where deliveries are conducted must have skilled staff and facilities for care at birth to all newborns and to provide resuscitation of those who require it. In addition, CHC FIUs should be equipped to provide initial care and stabilization of sick babies and care of most low birth weight newborns that do not require intensive care. Every district hospital or sub-district hospital that conducts more than 3,000 deliveries should have a special newborn care unit that is equipped to provide special care to most sick newborns except those requiring mechanical ventilation or surgical interventions. There should be agreed procedures for transport of sick newborns from one level of facility to another. SNCU within the district hospitals must have continuous availability of qualified medical and nursing staff and resources to meet the needs of all sick babies. In addition, this unit explains the manpower necessary for newborn unit. It also briefs about the infection control, which is given in detail in the next unit, Unit 4 and Block 1. Dot. Thank you. Subscribe to our channel for more updates and we will see you with the next chapter.